it's Max Wheelock, everybody! <laughs> this is OMGB on the sofa from Tokyo. I'm Justin Mohouse. And like today's guest, I've concentrated on just the one discipline for Tokyo 2020, eating crisps on the sofa. Please welcome the only man to defend the pommel horse in 30 years. And it's Max Wheelock, everybody! <laughs> To see Max. Thank you. Before we go any further, let's do the obvious. Something that periodically we say to you: show us your medal. Yeah. What colour yeah. is it? I've not. I've not watched it yet. <laughs> not. I have. I've watched. I have watched it. It's gold. There Look go. at that. Oh. The build-up to these uh, Olympic Games have been so different from every other Olympic or every other meet yep. because you're coming into this as a champion, red hot favourite, everything else. On top of a pandemic, yep. um, but uh, you've done it, mate. How, yeah. how are you feeling? It feels crazy. Like this one feels just mental. I think, like, like you said, it's been a challenging time for everybody. And as athletes, I think every athlete would agree that your preparation hasn't been perfect. You know, a year out from Olympics, it was not ideal to be in the garden on the pommel horse and just kind yeah. of doing what you can to keep ticking over. Um, so I think it feels even more rewarding actually winning with that basis of what everything that was going on, um, building up. I'm getting older, I'm 28 years old now. Yeah, you um, are getting years, <laughs> isn't it? Getting really old. Yeah, but there was, there was so much pressure. And I think, like, like you said, as in the athletes that are the favourites going in, or if you won in Rio um, previously five years ago, the pressure is crazy going into another Olympics. Well, you famously, you never watch the other competitors, do you? No. Because you know what you're going to do yourself, you're going to watch it. But you had to this time because yep. you're drawn <laughs> first. How did they do the draw? Are you all there when they do the draw? No, no, Scott told me what the draw was. Um, I think it's random, it's done in a list and then it's basically... You're up first. Yeah, we got, we got told we was up first and I think, you know, usually, um, I'm not used to that, I usually go up a bit lower down the, down the list and we can kind of prepare three different routines, three different levels of right. difficulty. And Scott basically watches all the scores that come in from other gymnasts ahead exactly. of me. you'd be all right just doing this. <laughs> That's basically what it is. Yeah, and yeah. then we determine what routine we go for because obviously increased difficulty increases risk. But this time, we had no options. It was first up, all out. So you had to go all out. And what was the difficulty level you went for? Is it? So I went for a seven, seven. start. So that's my highest routine that I've um, ever competed. Yeah. So the risk factor was high. So the risk reward and all that sort of thing, that's, that's going. So you mentioned Scott there. Scott's your, your brother-in-law, isn't he? And your coach. Yep. And your mate. To be honest, like, I know Scott's sitting, sitting over there in the room, but I literally wouldn't be here without him. No. Um, he's obviously been my, by my side this whole time. When you yeah. think about I was training in my garden, I sometimes tuned in, Scott was on FaceTime watching the sessions, um, um, seeing how I was doing, just making sure I was ticking over. Um, but it's been incredible. And Scott was, um, it's amazing to have Scott down on there, on the pommel horse, literally running that routine with me the whole, every step of the way. Family is uh, the number one thing to you, as we, as yep. we know. Um, uh, the girls at home, Leah and Willow, how are they? Been, have you been catching up with them every day? Yeah, I've been FaceTiming every day. feel very lucky to have FaceTime nowadays. And yeah, Willow is actually, it's been amazing because usually, when, when we've had Willow and I've been away for a short, short period of time than this, usually it gets about a week in and she's just not interested in me at all, seeing yeah. her FaceTime. But she's actually been quite interested. She's actually missed me quite a lot. She's saying she wants me home. So it's been a long time. I've been away for a month now, um, which is a long time to be away from. Yeah. And, I can't and is she back. aware of what you've done? Is she aware that you've won, do you think? Um, I don't know. I yeah. don't know. Um, obviously not fully. Like She's still young. She's only two and a half, but um, she watched it. She was there. She was with all the family. She saw everyone like cheering and going crazy. So she knows I was at gym. She goes to gym once a week and she absolutely yeah, she, loves is it. Is she into it? Yeah, she loves it. Yeah. Absolutely loves it, which is really cool. Are you like tough on her? Like, you didn't <laughs> nail that, Willow. <laughs> no. Are you putting max pressure on her? <laughs> Come on, Willow. She'll have, have a bring your Uncle Scott round. <laughs> yeah. I've been following you on Instagram and you seem to have had a little bit of a bromance. Uh, with Mr. Fraser, is that right? <laughs> yeah, I think we've got on really well. I think the whole team have got on well. It's, been yeah. a, it's actually been a really nice team. So the different dynamic as well in this team is actually, I'm the only one out of the men's and women's who has been to a previous Olympic Games. Yeah. So, and what that brought to the whole experience for everyone was actually so much excitement. They were all making their debut. They were all becoming Olympians. Yeah. And that positivity. And you were like, ah, I've done it. <laughs> Third time, mate, I'm not bothered. <laughs> No, but I think it brung so much like energy and like positivity, which was wicked. And I think, like I said, just four men, four women. It's the first time where it's been really, really like one team, which has been really nice. And yeah, yeah I think everyone's massively enjoyed it. 
And out in Rio, one of the challenges we did was uh, was flipping it, was the, the cards. Yep. And you undeniably were the champion of well, that. I saw you, you told me that you moved on from that now, have you? Yeah, well, it was just so <laughs> funny that you brought your cards and you've been practising this in the village. I have. Yeah, <laughs> and you got really good at it. I got, okay, yeah, I'm quite happy with it. We don't do that anymore, mate. <laughs> we're, not, we're not flipping cards anymore. Uh, can, you, can you stack cups? I can give it a good shot. I can see the leaderboard there, which I've been eyeing up. All right, let's cup stack. Okay, Max, uh, gold medal winning Olympian, hero, athlete, <laughs> gymnast, current armchair athlete champion from Rio, the Flip It King. Yep. But can you start cups? Let's find out. Uh, the time will start when you lift the first cup. Max Whitlock, oh, cup stack. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> right. Your time. A bit iffy at the end. So Max, you came here really just with one medal in mind, the gold medal for the pommel. You got that. Not only that, you've smashed it in cup stacking. <laughs> Leader on the board, 5.45. A brilliant friend of DFS, yeah. a remarkable uh, athlete, an example to the youth of Britain. You're an amazing, you. amazing man. I Thank think you. everybody agrees. Give it up for Max Whitlock, everybody. Thank you very much. <laughs>